Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm Greer and it's lovely to have you here with me today. I've been experiencing a bit of a dilemma lately. Maybe not a dilemma, that sounds a bit dramatic, but I've been thinking a lot about something lately which is social media, overconsumption of media, and this feeling that you are constantly distracted as a result of being chronically online and trying to figure out how to get out of that. This video is going to be more of a chit chat because I don't have all the answers right now. This is something that I am coming to you with. Just talking about what I've been experiencing and sharing that with you could potentially be helpful even if it just means that you realize that you're not the only person who feels like this. Without further ado, let's just get into the video and, and let's talk about this the social media thing first. So when I first started this channel about a year ago, I made a video about things that you can do to ensure that you have a more positive experience on social media. So actionable steps that you can take. And some of the things I spoke about were ensuring that you are engaging with content that is valuable to you, making sure that you mute and unfollow accounts at your discretion, not feeling like you are obligated to share every single moment of your life, and being mindful of any connections that you're maintaining on social media that you may actually have outgrown. And I do think that those things were helpful definitely in making me more mindful in my use of these platforms you know making the experience feel a little less icky but lately I've just been feeling like it's not enough no matter how much I regulate my time on Instagram or Twitter or TikTok I think that just by virtue of being on social media by virtue of having a presence on social media I'm always going to feel some sort of attention deficit I'm always going to feel that there's some kind of lack that I'm behind that there's something that I need to catch up on and that I absolutely need to be on these platforms to stay up to speed and up to date with everything that's going on I've also come to the realization that there's very little in my life that has had as much control and I think control is the right word to use here as much control over me as social media you know I've been treating it as something that is necessary something that i'm obligated to participate in and i am not okay with that i just have some serious thinking to do regarding how i'm going to approach these platforms moving forward am i just going to go cold turkey and delete my accounts am i going to try to do different breaks here and there my first post on instagram i think was in 2013 i probably started a facebook account around 2011 twitter around the same time and so at this point i've had a presence on social media for more than half of my life and I've gone through life changes I've grown in and out of myself time and time again and during that time I have not taken any sort of substantial break or time away from social media you know I remember first signing up on Instagram you know back in the day when it was just a photo sharing application and that's sort of what I used it as I shared my love for photography I later started using it um, as a form of self-expression and then I think where things really changed for me was when it sort of became this means for people to gain social capital and there was this hyper awareness of followers and likes and creating a certain aesthetic and now we have everything that you can imagine on Instagram from recommendations for what to do in a city to political endorsements and opinions to memes and unpolished photo dumps it's just a lot. And there are a few specific trends and patterns that I've noticed on places like Instagram that are sort of giving me that extra push to take that break that, that I so need. The first one is this concept of ghost followers. Now, when I post on social media, a large motivating factor for that is that I want to be able to connect with the people that I share those spaces with. I want to be able to start a conversation about mutual interests, maybe books or photography, music, places that I visited. I want to feel that connection, right? But I think the problem with that is that the way that a lot of these platforms are set up now and, that the, and the way that they've developed has made it a lot easier for us to just lurk and watch other people and see what's happening in their lives as opposed to actually engaging and showing interest and support. And I just get this funny feeling that I'm constantly being surveilled on there. I was reading a Substack article that referenced a TikTok by a creator and this creator who supposedly coined the term ghost followers. And she said, it's people who watch your every move, watch everything you're doing, but they don't support any of it. It's just people watching you and it's just icky. It just feels judgy. 
Instagram feels judgy now. It's very filtered and like corporate and I don't know. It just, it doesn't have a good feel to it. And I read that and I thought this is exactly how I feel. But not only that, I am also guilty of lurking because it's so easy to just get on these apps like Instagram, for example, tap, tap, tap through story after story, take in what you see other people doing, take in how other people are living their lives, take their recommendations, take their opinions and not do anything with that right? You're just sort of passively taking things in. It's a lot easier to do that than to initiate a conversation, ask a question, or push back maybe on somebody's opinion a little bit. And for those Harry Potter fans out there, it's almost like you're moving through these spaces wearing an invisibility cloak, right? You don't want to really be seen, you just want to see right? The article goes on to say, social media has been less and less social and more media. Apps began prioritizing algorithms and discovery and ways of increasing views that de-emphasized direct connection, putting us all in the same place while somehow tearing us further apart. So now, social media's almost 5 billion users are not turning to talk to each other, but each turning outward, shouting their skincare routines or restaurant recommendations or opinions into a void. We're all just online for ourselves which means there are fewer and fewer people to be the audience, to like, comment, or otherwise interact. As a result, our outward-facing posts are getting less engagement, and we're less inclined to share them. We're growing silent, lurking, sitting in these digital rooms out of habit, and not because we really want to be there. And so for that reason, it all starts to feel a little performative, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, I find myself doing a lot of self-censoring. a lot of self -censoring when I'm on these platforms. Let's take Instagram again. I know I keep saying Instagram, but I think that's because that's the one that I, one of the, the apps that I use the most. I will spend way too much time trying to figure out the best wording or the best caption for um, a post or a story. And I always have at the back of my mind, who is in this group of ghost followers, this this audience that I have, what is it that they're going to find cool or funny or appropriate or becoming of Greer or the version of Greer that they have in their head? And then I have to stop myself and realize I am trying to filter and, you know, create and express for people who may not know me in the way that warrants that meticulous care or may not know me at all and our connection is only virtual it is a very counterproductive way of spending your time it makes me feel like too much and too little all at once something else that i've struggled with is the way these platforms sort of help you to cultivate an inflated sense of self-importance and that's something that i'm particularly afraid of especially as someone who likes to live or try to live by stoic principles and humility i constantly try to remind myself that I am but a blip in time and that I'm really no different from anybody else. There are certain circumstances and opportunities that I've been lucky to have to get me to where I am today, but that could have just as easily been somebody else. You know, my life could have been somebody else's. So I just try to remind myself of things like that to help me to stay humble. But I think that that's more and more difficult when you're constantly in these performative spaces and you are ascribing your relevance to something as trivial as a social media post. And finally, I wanted to touch on something that has been a lot more evident recently, which is, you know, this this discourse that happens when, you know, there's any major world event or something polarizing happening in current affairs. Let's take the Israel-Palestine conflict, for example. You know, all the grandstanding and the virtue signaling that happens in these online spaces, the keyboard warriors who are arguing about terms and how you refer to this, how you should say this, the revisionist history, all while people are literally losing their lives for a long time i grappled with whether i should be posting about you know these events on my social media platforms worrying about if i was informed enough you know worried about who i would offend if i took a side what does it even mean to take a side and do we really understand what we are doing or saying when we make those proclamations i would be worried about whether i was educated or informed enough to have an opinion on, on these world events these platforms can sort of lull you into a sense of complacency where you somehow think that talking about it talking about taking a stand, talking about making a donation, talking about supporting whatever cause it is, you think that talking about it has the same effect as actually doing the action, which of course is not the way it is, right? Now moving on from that, 
let's talk a bit about the other issue that I've been dealing with, which is this idea of overconsumption of media. And I think for me, TikTok and YouTube is where most of the overconsumption is happening right now. What I found refreshing initially about TikTok is the community feel and that there isn't necessarily an expectation of a certain kind of aesthetic. That's not to completely ignore the whole influencer marketing side of it. But what I love about TikTok is I love the unpolished and unfiltered takes. I love the niche interests that people have and talk about and that you can go on there and somebody can share a story, an experience that you think that only you've been through, but then you go in the comments and you see thousands of people relating and it goes back to this idea that we all really live the same life in in some ways and that can be comforting right i know that i'm going to be able to go on there and find something that appeals to my exact type of humor but did you know that a bee stinger is actually barbed that i get to see everyday people talking about things that i am interested in and I can do so in a format that feels like a FaceTime call with a friend. But the problem comes about when I start to watch and listen more than I'm actually living my own life. So I end up watching more content on cooking than I do trying new recipes myself. I end up listening to people talk about their book hauls and books that they read recently more time than I spend reading. That carries over to other places online. Reddit, for example, I will spend so much time researching and going through threads about games and consoles more time than I actually spend playing the consoles and the games that I own. And then now that I'm a creator on YouTube, I think there's that added level of overconsumption because I feel like I have to keep up. I have to know what's relevant. I have to know what people are enjoying so that I can grow my channel and so that I don't get left behind. On top of all of that, it feels like I'm constantly distracted. You know, I'll be watching a YouTube video, but then at the same time, I'll be in my recommended videos trying to see what I can watch next. I'll be reading a book and while reading, I'm thinking about the book that I'm going to read after this book. Because I have all of these things constantly buzzing around in my head, I get overwhelmed. When I'm overwhelmed, the antidote to that is going on social media, scrolling mindlessly, getting that hit of dopamine. So it's a constant cycle and I feel like I'm in this endless loop you know, on a hamster wheel, going nowhere fast. For anyone who's experiencing this, I think it's important for us to do an inquiry into why we're so afraid of stepping away, or why we're so afraid of taking a break from being online. You know, I think back to childhood and, you know, we say, oh, those times were so much simpler. And indeed they were because we didn't have as much access to other people and their lives as we do now. I miss that feeling of picking up a Nancy Drew book and just having the rest of the world fall away, just getting so engrossed in that story. I miss being able to sit down and enjoy a meal without feeling in the back of my head like I need to be listening to a podcast or or watching a video. I don't know what that feels like anymore just because there is so much going on in my head all at once. I try my best to savor those quiet moments without any sort of external stimulation, but it's just difficult when, like I said, you know that those spaces are open to you. Instagram is just waiting for you to open it and start scrolling. TikTok is just waiting for you to open and, and see what the next new creator is talking about, right? I've also tried to think about some of the worst case scenarios of me not being online as much as I am. Maybe I will miss out on certain trends. Maybe I will feel left out of conversations if people are talking about something that has happened recently that I just was not aware of. And then, of course, as a creator, thinking that I'm not going to be getting those insights into what is relevant and what people want to see. Not being on these platforms means that I have one less channel through which I can promote my work. But what I keep coming back to is the experience that I have when people tell me that they are not on social media. It's not something that I like balk at. My initial reaction is never to think that it's weird or strange. I always think wow you really have something figured out your life must be so peaceful and I can admit to myself that I want to know what that is like I am aware that if I step away from these platforms I will have more time to do the things that I enjoy more time to spend on the things that I actually want to do but there is this friction between me and finally making the decision to do that and part of it is Um, I'm not sure what approach to take and so this is where I will humbly come to you and ask what has worked for you if you're somebody who has been experiencing these feelings of overwhelm 
just being constantly online and on these social platforms what has worked for you is it a cold turkey approach where you just one day just delete those accounts and then never look back is it a more gradual approach where you maybe come off of instagram and then give it some more time come off of twitter and then give it some more time come off of tiktok do you just take periodic breaks over time you know what what has worked best for you i am really eager to hear uh, your approach down in the comments i could really use some insights on that all right so that's enough rambling from me for today if you made it to the end thank you so much for being here if you enjoyed the video remember to leave a like and subscribe take good care and i'll see you in the next video bye